Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at a three pedal set from Race Gear. Now you might not have heard of Race Gear and I've got to be honest, I hadn't either. Well Race Gear are a company from the Czech Republic owned by esports driver Martin Siritek. But when Martin sent me an email asking me if I wanted to try them and said that they were on the more affordable side, well that got my attention. Everybody seems to be making pedal sets now which cost a thousand euros, as if that's normal. Well, in this video, we're gonna see if somebody can make a decent pedal set for less than half of that. But before we get into the video, the necessary disclaimer, Race Gear sent me these pedals for free, so I didn't pay for them, although they don't get to see this video before it's published and they've got no input at all in relation to what I say. I will also say, as usual, that this is not a product review. There's guys out there that do product reviews way better than I ever could. But what I am, though, is a sim racer. You know what I'm all about. That's what I do. So that's the opinion you're going to get. So what do we have here, then? So we have a three-pedal set made from three-millimeter stainless steel. The accelerator has got a 20-kilo load cell. The clutch has also got a 20-kilo load cell, and the brake has got a 120-kilo load cell. So the brake is made up of your typical spring and elastomer brake stack. We've seen that set up on brake pedals in sim racing for years. There's no hydraulics on any of the pedals. It's just springs and elastomers, as you would expect for the pedal set at this price point. So each of the pedals are independent, so they mount to the base plate independently, or you can mount them directly to your rig. So for the accelerator, we have got three adjustments. You can adjust the angle of the pedal itself at the back, so you undo the Allen bolts, move up or down, put them back in to adjust the angle of the pedal. You can adjust the amount of pedal throw with the adjuster in the middle. And you can also adjust the stiffness of the pedal by adjusting the angle of the spring. On the clutch, there's not really much adjustment apart from the angle of the pedal itself with the adjuster at the back. And the same on the brake, the adjustments at the back for adjusting the angle of the pedal. And you can also adjust the pedal plates on each one of the pedals up or down. Now, with other pedals that I've used before, you actually take the brake stack out from the bottom. But with this one, you've got to actually undo the middle bolt, take out the spaces and slide it out from the top, which is a little bit different. It obviously saves a little bit of money doing it that way, but it makes it a little bit more difficult for us to change things quickly. But it's easy enough to do. You just take the nut off, slide the axle bolt out, and then it just folds forward. You can just lift the brake stack off. Just a bit of a pain taking out the tools every time you just want to adjust the stiffness of the brake. By default, the elastomer stack has two soft and one medium. I did get the performance pack from Race Gear, but I didn't need to fit that. And I think when you start looking at add-ons, this pedal set then gets a little bit more expensive. And I think that's the USP of this pedal set is the price. Now, before we dive in any further, the usually four categories that I look at when I'm looking at a product. I look at things as if I'm going to buy them with my own money. So firstly, how do they look? Because if something doesn't look right, you're not going to buy it in the first place. Secondly, what's the build quality like? Thirdly, how does it perform? And finally, is it value for money? So firstly, we'll talk about looks. Now, I've mentioned previously, I like the look of stainless steel equipment. I like that industrial look. If you've got an aluminium profile rig, well, it just looks right to have this type of pedal set on there. So I think these look pretty good. Don't look as nice as some other pedal sets out there, but I wouldn't consider them to be ugly. But this is certainly a case of function over form. Onto build quality, I thought the build quality was excellent. There's no rough edges on any of the pedals. All of the stainless steel is really nicely finished. It has been blasted with something, so it's not shiny. There's nice little logos etched onto the pedals. So build quality, no complaints at all. Although you do get a bit of a, a little 3D printed controller box. Now this isn't the best, but it's 3D printed and this is where they save their money. So this uses the mini XLR ports. I don't know if you can see it there. It's probably out of focus. So on there, you've got the three ports for the clutch, brake, and accelerator. It's got one USB on there, and it's also got a ground on the back there. So that's the only thing where I would say you can see corners have been cut just by the 3D printed box. But that doesn't matter. That's out of sight. That's tucked away. So that's the only thing that I would mention about the build quality. Now, Onto performance. Now, I think 
it's really important when testing a set of pedals is to race with a set of pedals. I could just jump in the rig, hot lap until my heart's content, hit my braking markers every single time. But it's only when you're in the heat of battle racing online, well, that's when you know how good a pedal set or isn't. And you know you've got a good pedal set when you don't even think about the pedals that you're using. What I mean is during a race, you're racing other people and you're not thinking about where your feet are. You're not thinking about what your feet are doing. It's all happening naturally. And that's what I found with this pedal set. So I've been using these pedals now for a couple of weeks and any videos in that last two week period you've seen on my channel, I've been using these pedals and I've mentioned it when I've been racing a few times. And I purposely driven cars which are notoriously a little bit more difficult to drive, such as the Porsche Cup car, the HPD, the GT1s. And I found these pedals to be absolutely fantastic. The brake pedal, I would go as far as to say the brake pedal is one of the best brake pedals that I've ever used. The throttle pedal wasn't as smooth as I would have liked it to have been, but the brake pedal more than made up for it. The clutch, a clutch does what a clutch does. For me, I could press a button on the steering wheel. I don't really care about the clutch. You push it in, change gear, let it out. I'm not particularly bothered about a clutch pedal feeling realistic. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's just a clutch. I was able to calibrate the pedals to a point where I was probably pushing around about 70 kilos. I was able to find threshold braking really easily. I was able to bleed off the brakes really smoothly. I was able to have very tiny inputs just to keep the weight of the car over the front tires. Honestly, I found the brake pedal to be exceptional, which is not what I expected, if I'm going to be honest. And as I mentioned, I would have liked the accelerator pedal to be a bit smoother. I'm not saying it was bad. Again, like the clutch, I'm not saying it's bad. I would have just liked it to maybe be a little bit lighter, a little bit smoother. But there was something that does need a little bit of work. So this is the race gear configurator. If you've had this type of pedals before, this will look quite familiar. So on here, we've got options down the side for writing to and reading from the device and where you can load your default configs, etc. Links to the website, the wiki and language. Now on here, we've got throttle, brake and clutch. So if I press my throttle, you can see the value will go up and down. Same with the brake and same with the clutch. Now on the right hand side here, this is where you do your calibration. Now, I'm just letting the pedals rest now and you can see the jumping around like bilio. And no matter how much I play with the values, I can't stop that from happening. And also if I press the clutch, if you watch the throttle output, it actually goes up and down slightly. So there's obviously some interference somewhere with the pedal set that I've got now. I've got it set up as race gear suggests it's well away from any power sources other usb devices etc so the the power cables are nowhere near the usb cables for the pedals so we'll calibrate them so we've got to press it a few times and then let it rest and click save do the same with the brake and we'll do the same with the clutch so there so that's reduced the value somewhat and we'll write config to device so you can see the output is much less than the raw on each of the pedals but it's still jumping around like crazy now the only way i could get rid of this was going into pedal shaping and adding a small curve to the pedals so if we click on the throttle uh, we'll have it at 14 and then we'll write config to the device you can see there it's not jumping around so at rest that's fine and you would just calibrate the software or the pedals in the simulator and it would be absolutely fine. We'll do the same to the brake. So we'll use curve one and we'll write config to device. And you can see there the effect that's had on the brake, nice and still. We'll do that with the clutch as well. Write config to device. So we need a bit more on the clutch there, but you get the general idea. So we've jumped into the simulator, we've chosen iRacing and you can configure these in here just like you normally would, even though we've set the throttle curve in the software here, it will just pick up whatever data is sent from the pedals. So we'll click on pedals. One thing I did have to do was short calibrate the pedals. So if we hold the throttle right down, and just make a note of that number 32486 we'll just reset that and we'll just press the pedal 
until we're just under that number. So 32486, I think that'll do. We'll click done, break, and then we'll just have an auto clutch. It's just a clutch. So now you can see the pedals work perfectly. It's just a bit of a faff on setting the upper dead zone and the throttle curves and brake curve in the software. Now, I did reach out to Race Gear saying I was having trouble getting rid of the interference or the erratic behaviour of the pedals. And as yet, I haven't had a response, but it's been the festive period. They might be catching up. I just think the software needs a little bit of work to bring it up to everybody else's standard, really. But all that being said, I was able to dial it out with a pedal curve in the software, and it worked perfectly fine. I would have just liked to have been able to do that without having some kind of fake throttle curve and getting rid of the first 10% of the pedal. But apart from that, I've got absolutely no other complaints about the pedals. Now, these are a big old set of pedals, these. I'll put an image up on screen now of these pedals next to the SimLab XP1 pedals. Now, the SimLab pedals aren't small, but these things look huge. I mean, excuse the dirty used SimLab pedals. So the pedal plate on these pedals is 36 centimeters wide. And from the bottom of the pedal deck to the top of the pedal, it's 31 centimeters. So they are a big old set of pedals, but they fit my feet absolutely fine. Nice smooth pedal face, was able to race in socks, ideal. So let's talk about price. Now these prices are before VAT. So for a three pedal set, 412 euros that works out about 355 quid and about 450 us dollars then obviously you've got your own vat on top of that and race gear say that they send this out with a certain code so you shouldn't have any import duty so in the uk for example if i was going to buy this set of pedals with vat included it's going to cost me about 430 quid i think that is the bargain of the century i have never tested a set of pedals this good that cost this much. It just goes to show that you can make a really good pedal set, which are affordable. So to summarize, I think they look okay for what they are. It's a reasonably cheap pedal set. I like that industrial look I have done forever. So I think they look okay, but as I mentioned, it's definitely function over form. Build quality, I thought it was really good. No rough edges, the stainless steel was fine. Everything went together as it should do. I just think, the 3D printed controller box housing wasn't great, but it's a controller box housing that's just going to be tucked away underneath your rig. So that doesn't need to look startling. Performance wise, I thought they performed exceptionally. I was racing in the top split on iRacing and my pace was where I would expect it to be. And I've been privileged to have used some really, really good pedal sets over the years. And the performance of these, well, it was up there. Price-wise, I think they are priced incredibly well. The only downside for me is the software or the electronics in the controller box. At rest, the pedals are just a little bit erratic. I think there just needs to be a little bit more work there on the electronics and the software. But apart from that, no other complaints at all. So I'll leave a link down below to the Race Gear website. Go and check them out. That's not an affiliate link. I'm not affiliated with Race Gear. There's no kickbacks to me. So I've got no financial interest whether you buy them or not. I'm just giving you my opinion as a sim racer. So I want to say thank you to Martin at Race Gear for sending me these out to test and have a look at. Hopefully you guys found it useful. And as I mentioned, just goes to show that you can have good quality equipment that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great week. See you later. Cheers.